Plugins are small programs that can't be used by themselves. They have to first be plugged into another application, which is known as a host. Plugins add functionality to the host program. This could be in the form of adding effects like EQs and delays and reverbs, or maybe noise reduction or analysis. In Peak, plugins can be used when editing audio documents, when mastering songs in the playlist, and even when using the batch file processor. This tutorial will teach you the basics of using plugins for editing audio documents. We'll get into their other uses in separate tutorials. Peak supports real-time audio unit and VST format effects plugins. Real-time means that you can hear the changes they make to audio instantly without having to first process them. This makes working with them fast because you don't have to process, listen, and then undo if you don't like the results. With real-time plugins, you make the adjustments as desired, and then at the end, you apply the effect permanently to a file. Audio Unit and VST plugins are installed into central directories on your computer, and compatible host apps such as Peak can then access them. If you navigate into the root level library folder, and then into Audio, Plugins, you'll see a Components folder and a VST folder. Audio Units are stored in the Components folder, and VST plugins are stored in the VST folder. In Peak, Audio Units can all be found here. and VSTs can all be found here. All BIAS VST plugins are listed under the BIAS menu, and in the Finder they're stored in the same VST folder as all other VST plugins. You can set plugin windows to behave like regular Mac document windows or to float over other windows. By default, plugin windows are like all other document windows. When set this way, it's possible to lose a plugin window behind an audio document window. To bring a plugin back into view, just select its name under the window menu. Or press Command tilde on your keyboard to cycle through document windows. When plugins are set as floaters, you'll always see them on top of other windows. You can use plugins in Peak either on inserts or within the VBox signal routing matrix. In this video, we'll focus on inserts. There will be a separate tutorial for VBox. If you use more than one plugin insert, keep in mind that the audio signal is processed by the first active plugin, and then the next, and so on. There can be a big difference in sound between having an EQ on insert 1 and a reverb on insert 2, compared to having them the other way around. Once you've opened a plugin, set the controls how you want them. In some plugins, you can just do this by ear, make the desired adjustments until you get the desired sound. In other plugins, you may also have visual aids to help you. For example, in SoundSo Pro 2, I can use the hum meter as a visual aid to help locate the frequency of a hum. Once you've set the plugin up the way you want, you still need to permanently apply the effect to the audio file you're working with. In Peak, this is known as bouncing. Video editors know this as rendering. When you bounce a plugin, it affects just the selected portion of the waveform. If nothing is selected, or if everything is selected, the whole file will be processed. Once the bounce is finished, you'll see a dialog with options to remove, bypass, or keep the plugin active. If you want to close the plugin completely, click the Remove button. If you may want to use the plugin again, but want to temporarily disable it, click the Bypass button. If you're going to continue working with it right away, click the Keep Active button. Keep in mind that if you keep the plugin active and play a section of the file that was just bounced, it'll sound like it has double the effect as it's been processed and is now playing through the active plugin in real time. After you bounce an effect to a file, you can still undo it up until you save the file, at which point it becomes permanent. If you bounce a plugin but aren't sure about saving it, you can always use the Save a Copy As command to save a bounced copy and then close the original without saving it. You can close a plugin window to regain screen real estate and keep the plugin active. To do so, just click the red button in the upper left of the plugin's window. To bring a closed plugin window back into view, just choose it from the window menu. Up to five active plugins are listed at the bottom of this menu.
To temporarily disable a plugin, click the Bypass button at the bottom of the plugin window. Click it again to enable processing. Bypassing a plugin is especially useful if you have more than one plugin active. It lets you hear just one at a time. To load a factory preset, click the preset up or down arrows at the bottom of the plugin window to move through the presets one by one. Or, click the presets menu to see a list of all the available factory presets. To save a custom preset, configure the plugin settings as desired, and then click the save button at the bottom of the window. A save dialog appears, so you can choose where to save your preset. To load a custom preset, click the load button at the bottom of the window. An open dialog appears, so you can choose the preset from its saved location. To deactivate a plugin so that it no longer processes audio, go to the Plugins menu, navigate to the insert with the active plugin you want to close, and choose None. Remember, just closing the plugin window doesn't turn off processing. If you're working with Peak LE or Peak Pro, you can also record through plugins. For example, if you're recording from a tape deck and you know what type of noise the deck produces, you could open up SoundSoap, load in a custom preset of that particular noise, and then when you record through SoundSoap, the resulting file won't have noise in it. If you're recording a live event, you might choose to record through a couple of plugins like Reveal and Squeeze. This would allow you to monitor various aspects of the audio signal and also apply effects on the fly. To set up Peak to record through plugins, choose Record Settings from the Audio menu. Then, check the Record Through Plugins box. Now, Peak will record through any active plugins, and any changes in plugin settings will be recorded to the file. While recording through plugins can be convenient, be aware that you're always stuck with what you record, and you can't remove the effects from the recorded file. When bouncing a plugin, it's possible to apply an envelope to it to dynamically control the amount of the effects being applied over time. To configure the envelope shape, choose Plugins Envelope from the Plugins menu. In the window that appears, you'll see an envelope that's a solid line at 100% all the way across. This means that the current effect will be applied at 100% over the whole file. Notice that in the background of the Plugins Envelope window that you can see the selected part of the waveform. This is a good reference and helps with timing if you are creating plugin envelopes. With an envelope shape like this, the amount of reverb increases quickly and smoothly, creating a more dynamic sound effect. So these are the basics on how to work with plugins in Peak. For more information, see your Peak User Guide.